Good morning. Uh, my name is EG. I'm a postdoc in the Scalable Solvers group. Today I'll talk about how to perform energy calculations by time evolving wave functions on quantum computers. So quantum computers, they hold promising potential for many body physics. Uh, so a many body system by definition is composed of a large number of particles. This is where classical computers struggle because the complexity scales exponentially with the system size. Um, and this limitation becomes critical for uh, complex systems. So in the middle, I'm showing a nitrogen fixation process that converts hydrogen and nitrogen into uh, ammonia. So this process occurs with a catalyst called FOMOCO. So understanding the reaction mechanism requires knowing the energy configurations of the catalyst itself, and thus solving a many body Schrodinger equation. Um, so basically, um, uh, quantum computers can efficiently simulate these type of um, many body system by leveraging principles as, um, such as uh, superposition and entanglement. So just for a notation here, the H is the many body Hamiltonian. It's a large matrix uh, describing the particle interactions. So when it acts on some stationary wave function psi here, uh, which encodes some particle configurations, it returns the energy E here. We also call this wave function psi in eigenstates as we recognize this is an eigenvalue problem. So in fact, uh, people have used quantum algorithms to study this specific reaction pathway, which make it uh, hopeful to scale the process for hopefully industrial applications. So although quantum computing is an attractive paradigm uh, and there's lots of exciting progress, we have not entered the era of perfect quantum computation yet. So current devices faces various constraints um, as we're in the so-called noisy intermediate scale quantum era. So this means we're limited first by the number of qubits we can manage. Second, um, the connectivity between qubits on different physical platforms. And third, uh, how many operations we can perform on the qubits. And beyond these size constraints, uh, we must also account for noises or errors throughout the whole computation. So our goal is to design algorithms that are both efficient and compatible with available hardware. Uh, so for energy calculations, I uh, hear a list three algorithms with different computational primitives. So on the left-hand side, we have the quantum phase estimation, which outputs the energy in a binary represent representation stored in a bunch of qubits. So QPD, QPD is attractive because it saturates the famous Heisenberg limited scaling. Uh, on the other hand, it requires a relatively large number of qubits and also fault-tolerant computation with error correction, which cannot be fully realized yet. So moving down the ladder in the middle, we have the adiabatic state preparation, which transforms a wave function by gradually changing the driving Hamiltonian. Uh, so these algorithms can already run on commercial quantum computers uh, for simple benchmark. But the term adiabatic here suggests that the change in the Hamiltonian must be slow enough, which can lead to a large circuit depth. So today we're going to focus on the variation of quantum eigensolver and its variants, uh, so which is on the right. So they use both quantum and classical resources in an iterative manner. So the lower figure illustrates the VQE idea. So a quantum computer is used to evaluate the energy through a parameterized quantum circuit. And then the classical computer inputs these quantum energy measurements to update the parameters. So VQE type of algorithm, they're fairly hardware efficient, uh, but they do not always give the best energy estimation. For example, having to optimize over the parameter space is still a challenge, especially with non-convex optimization landscape. So in this presentation, I'll talk about uh, what, what I call a pretty powerful instance of the quantum hybrid, uh, quantum classical hybrid approaches, where essentially no parameter update is needed. Instead, the, the main ingredient we use is the time evolution of a wave function, which I denote here as uh, u of t. Uh, so it turns out for many physically interesting systems, uh, U of T can be implemented on a quantum computer efficiently uh, through a discretized scheme layer by layer, which is shown on the right figure. And the key quantity we measure on a quantum computer is this time-dependent overlap, which is boxed on the left-hand side in the middle. So this, this is literally computed by taking the overlap of some initial wave function in its time-evolved version. And why do we care about this overlap? Uh, it turns out we can write down an equivalent expression of the overlap in the energy basis just by a basis transformation. And the resulting expression on the right-hand side is simply a sum of sinusoids, 
whose frequencies precisely encode the configuration, configurational energies of the Hamiltonian we care about. So in other words, the energies and the weights of the stationary states or the eigenstates, they're reflected in the composing frequencies or phases and amplitudes of the signal. So these can be extracted on a classic computer once a time series of the left-hand side gets sampled on a quantum computer. And the bottom barcode represents a typical energy spectrum of a many body system. Uh, so next we illustrate on a high level how do we use time evolution for two practical cases. So one for estimating the lowest energy in the spectrum and the other for getting the average energy. So for the lowest energy, also known as the ground state energy, what we want is we want to isolate out a single pair of sinusoidal phase and amplitude. And we do this here by successively time evolving some initial wave function and then combining the time evolved states along the way. So how does it work? So the big picture is uh, we know that the complex value phases, they would rotate around or wrap around the unit circle as we carry out the time evolution. So therefore, high energy contributions can be effectively suppressed if um, we just take proper linear combination of these time evolved states by a phase cancellation type of argument. So formally, we can formulate a real-time approach by projecting the exact Schrodinger equation onto the span of these time-evolved wave functions. Um, this gives us a um, projected eigenvalue problem, which approximates the full one of exponential size. But this projected problem is much smaller, which means we can solve it efficiently on a classical computer. Okay, so now we move on to um, average energy calculation, which is very different from the ground state problem. Um, so here I formulate a problem as the task of estimating the trace of a matrix normalized by the dimension of the, of the problem here. So we know the exact trace evaluation requires summing up the diagonal elements of the matrix. And to avoid the exponential cost here of diagonal enumeration in this case, we consider something called stochastic techniques. So these techniques involving preparing nice random wave functions and taking random inner products. Um, so this can lead to a cost potentially independent of the problem size. And here we do the random state preparation on a quantum computer through time evolution. But the time evolution is carried out under a ref reference Hamiltonian G, which is different from the system Hamiltonian H. Um, I won't go into the details, but I just want to leave the remark that a simple reference Hamiltonian G can be designed for almost all kinds of problems. Uh, and uh, this G is universal. Uh, which allow us to get to a stochastic estimate with a tight variance. And moreover, um, these real-time stochastic states are exponentially simpler to prepare compared to the classical counterpart with the same variance. Okay, so for a numerical illustration, let's first look at the ground state problem. So here we fix uh, some time step delta t of our time evolution, and we plot the energy error versus the total number of time steps taken. So the convergence here is rather rapid and consistent across different molecules. So ranging from hydrogen chain to more complex chromium dimer. And the chemical accuracy is indicated as this horizontal dash line here. So the convergence plot empirically shows time evolution is indeed pretty good for extracting the, the lowest energy up to chemical accuracy. Now we look at the average energy problem uh, as the computation of the trace of a matrix function. Uh, so the matrix function we consider here is called density of states, which is on the right corner. It's a Gaussian of the Hamiltonian. And the eigenvalues of this Gaussian would review the dis distribution of the Hamiltonian energies. So roughly speaking, the density of states tells you how many um, quantum states are available for particle occupation, which influences the electronic and optical properties of materials. So again, looking at the numerics, we see a relatively good agreement between the exact and then stochastic, stochastic version of the density of states calculations here. Okay, so to sum up, uh, so in this presentation, we sort of argued or um, said that the time evolution is native to quantum computing and it can be leveraged to perform accurate energy calculations. So this presentation only gives a very, very broad and concise overview of the real-time methods, and then there are many more interesting questions along the line. So thank you so much for your attention, and also want to thank the organizer of the symposium. Thank you. <laughs>